So, um, Liebe of graphic subsystems, history and visions, I decided to talk about a little bit about that because I just uh, know a lot about that because uh, I'm in the office development quite a while. Um, so I wanted to give an overview where we came from, why it is like it is, so maybe sometimes hard to understand. And how we may escape where, from where we are. So let's go. So where, where did that all start? It started really with the release of Star Office 1.0 in 85. So our code base is 37 years old. So uh, mostly the original code is gone. So when you want to know more details about the development, and uh, the different companies involved, you can just go to the wiki page. So the interesting part is, the first release was writer only, so only writer was created in, in the first one. It was on Windows only, so it had to use WinGDI because there was nothing else. Uh, the WinGDI 1.0, just allowed something like four windows, you had to run on 640K, all that stuff you cannot imagine today anymore, which is good, of course. And uh, luckily, they decided to use C++, so we profit from that today. That would be, have been very bad, because um, if they would have chosen else, because C++ was far from normal at that time, and not very stable. Uh, so, long-term effects of using WinGDI. So, it was more or less directly mirrored to VCL output device. We, we still have that pen brush stuff. It is a little bit abstracted on our side with fill, color, line, color, and so. But this was done in one of the <coughs> second or third releases. So, um, Problems is only a single context per graphic target output device. We still have that. No transformations, only map mode. We still have that in output device. Integer coordinates, meta files. Um, we are a little bit away from integer coordinates. I have added a lot of stuff which uses double precision using base GFX, which was developed in the transition, in the try to uh, transit away from that. We still have meta files, still our own, but try to keep them as compatible as possible to our big competitor. Transparency at that time had just four steps. It was done using pixel pattern blends. We had no alpha channel uh, for the bitmaps and no anti-aliasing. was uh, just no one knew about anti-aliasing at that time. And unfortunately an own wild definition of gradients, <laughs> which I will uh, talk about at the end a little bit. So uh, new, ver new versions came along, Marco Berrios decided to do um, graphic programs, store impress, calc and chart stuff, new targets were defined. So um, writer stayed pretty unchanged, but VCL was extracted from it to get a graphic space for the other code. Uh, bases which were to be developed. So at that point, they missed the chance to do something as um, WinGDI. So the problem was the target systems, in, in that case mainly Linux, just had no GDI. So what, what to do? Um, so to not lose too much time and resources, it was just decided to implement GDI on Linux. So to emulate and we implement it. Um, so unfortunately, this has consequences until today. So uh, even today, we still re-implement kind of WinGDI 1.0 similar stuff when we write new backends. So for example, uh, single graphic context. So state of pen brush, I think most of you know that. Uh, um, we have somewhat uh, stack stuff with push and pop, but still the problem in power meter calls. There are different parts in the office which use different norms um, to
to lay out what you need in the output device before or after the call, so this crashes always, it causes a lot of problems all the years. So, no modern graphic system uses stuff like that anymore. You know, you know also that multiple render context, uh, handed to draw commands with Mogli transformations, the targets are just handled as pixel targets as it should be. So, other problem, map mode transformations. So, map mode is just a part of a homogene transformation. It only contains translation and scale. It has no rotation or shear or not even mirroring. Um, it is not embeddable uh, because you only have this relative map mode, especially a problem in meta files when you have to rescale them or something. Um, no full homogene transformations. Uh, rotate, rotation and shear is handmade even today in the SCR objects. They are uh, still multiplied, uh, the hard way with an angle value uh, extracted from sinus cosinus. I already did that once uh, to change that to something better using transformations, but this was lost work because uh, the branch I did it in was not integrated and it conflicted um, with the crash that we were not able to continue that stuff. So we have still bound rect, snap rect, unrotated snap rect where uh, the snap rect is more or less the model data, but uh, as you see, unrotated snap rect is hold to um, react on rotation stuff. So this is all in a strange state still, unfortunately. So, meta files have their own problems. It's more or less a recording of pain. So, the basic idea is, of course, when, when you paint something, you want to paint it again, maybe it's a good idea to record it. I think it's not because it's not no high quality graphic definition and it makes uh, all kinds of problems because it's not transformable mostly because it contains this map mode commands in the meta file itself. So as a workaround, we have move and scale, uh, which do their best, but it never fits together. As a second workaround today, you can put the meta file in a meta file primitive and work with the primitives which, which get created from the decompose. So that is clearly transformable completely and freely today. But at the cost of a decompose and to translate it to primitives. So meta files are not really maintainable, expandable in practice. You, in practice, you all know that loaded with extra data and comment actions, Microsoft is not better, said it's the same. Uh, somewhat higher level info encapsulating low level paints. That's interesting because that's a little bit similar to the primitive idea that you can get a decompose. Um, uh, it's integer, much old stuff, you still have to care about, which you cannot avoid to care about. The traditionally used 32-bit integer, I added quite some helpers in base GFX and all calls on the output device which use that and offer to paint, for example, uh, this transformation is all new stuff to, to lower the pain to use output device. So, uh, alpha for bitmaps, also a big problem because it was not added from the start. So, it that did just not exist in old WinGI, so no one come, came to the idea, which is clear because uh, alpha blending was not known at that time. So, to solve it, it's a just added a second bitmap and created bitmap X. So we are struggling today it's still from this design decision. It's in, incredible. Um, but it can really be used as bad example for design consequences. So beware what you do, be aware of consequences. So it's a little bit um, like we heard yesterday with choosing names of functions, design decisions are, e are even more critical. So, gradients. Uh, old Winch DI just had no gradients. 
to someone, and I really don't know who, because I joined 97, so all I told you until now, I've learned and heard from the guys I was working with. So, um, someone decided to implement some simple ones, and we are stuck with them until today, it's incredible. And we have some uh, SVG gradients, I implemented them when I did the SVG import, but we never managed to get them to the UI. They are fully functional, they work in all exports, we have them in the course, uh, but we don't offer them to the user, which is really a sad story. Um, they were painted, they are still painted when you use VCL in pixel coordinates by making a rectangle slowly smaller, normally by something like two pixels. This explains the form our, our gradients have when you think about it. The problem is, uh, this defines a nonlinear transformation which you cannot invert, so it's hard to get a, a texture transformation from that. So I spent quite some time when I did the primitives to solve that problem. It's a hard problem to solve, but I succeeded and we have this 100% compatible decomposition in primitives. Yeah. It is of course okay to fall back to VCL to draw them faster, but it is necessary to have them in primitives for the future and as fallback uh, when we want to get away using output device to render. So I, it, it even got so far that I have a texture mapping from XY to color, which is used in the 3D renderer to handle the gradient, so it's proof of concept, it's working, and this is exactly the chance we can use in the future for en enhanced external renderers, which use primitives, to directly um, use a texture transformation, even for the old uh, gradients, to make them 100% compatible. So another problem, paint invalidation, uh, so original paints uh, in the SAR objects before the changes were split in the paint in a calc boundwork function which never fitted together because it's just not as easy as it sounds on the first idea. You have text overlaps, you have hairlines which are um, a problem class of their own. Uh, when we have time, time I can tell more later. But uh, the line ends and line joints may be mitered, so you really have to do deep calculation when you want to get to the correct result. Uh, the other problem is uh, that paint was on the model function and we have a lot of few dependent renderings. So, um, in fact, the range you have to invalidate for repaint often depends on the page you want to show. For example, with the page number stuff on master page and page or similar stuff with extending fields which are dependent of page number or something similar. Um, so, and there is the UI part of VCL, it's uh, not so complicated, all buttons uh, fall back, which we don't really use anymore today because it's just ugly. So, the question is how to avoid that for the future? Uh, so, my conclusion from that, when I stumbled about that, when I landed there um, and saw a drawing layer which not even had a linear transformation and not, no matrix class when I arrived, was uh, stop painting, start defining geometry. So, the idea behind that is all places that paint are dependent on VZL architecture because they use output device commands. So, this would all have to be potentially changed in the future when you want to migrate to something. In defining geometry, you just need a small renderer, which is more or less a translator for the defined geometry. Um, so you never need to change the definition places anymore. And there are much more definition places than uh, translation necessities for new targets. And uh, the definitions can be extremely dynamic with primitives. So this is all on the cost to stop direct rendering um, and instead of that use a scene graph, of course. But um, if you want to get independent, 
and have uh, full freedom in future renders, it's the only way to go, if you ask me. And uh, I want to take a short moment, excuse me, to break a lens for the guys who did all this stuff. Um, as you may know, uh, we stand on the shoulders of giants, is a phrase used in science, and we profit from what was done before, even when we may know better today or um, we do the next step. Um, but don't forget, it iterates, and Philip Lohmann uh, once said to me, when I was in that phase, many of you are today complaining about what we have today and how could that happen, he told me, the new code of today is the old code of tomorrow. And that, that hits the point. So, um, just imagine in 10 years someone will complain about your stuff and take it back a little bit, <laughs> if you ask me. Um, so uh, everyone did the best he could and they had the same limitations we had. Uh, don't, just don't forget that. So, how, how to reach new shores from where we are? So, uh, the original request I got was, we need anti-aliasing. So, uh, after I had worked there for a few years and saw uh, in which conditions we were and what was possible, uh, I decided to not try to slowly move VCL to a better world, but to do something bigger. So, with all these ideas in the back of my head and with I, what I told you about metafiles, which uh, certainly uh, had an influence on the decompose idea, I came up with the primitive stuff. Uh, because this will allow a step-by-step -step transition. So, no chance to do it in one step, of course not. Of course not with just one person, because uh, they, they let me do but I had to do it alone. I did not get very much support. So if you ask me, the consequence is to get rid of VCL, stop using VCL. That's the point for me. Uh, so for new stuff, please try to use the existing primitive stuff, else we will never get rid of it, of the VCL. So, all and most can be done. Proof of concept is draw impress, for example, and all the overlays uh, and, and right hand calc are also using the primitives for the graphic stuff. And it's just working uh, because it had. So, um, we place VCL everywhere? No, not necessary. So, my strategic view at the existing office is just to split it between edit views and UI. So, my tool is to get the edit views to complete primitive rendering. Uh, that is a realistic target because you see it in draw impress. Um, so, write a calc partially, as I said, and I would just keep VCL for the UI stuff. Uh, it handles the Windows hierarchy, message passing stuff anyways, and it's in its transition to host other UI frameworks too, so it will stay for a long time for that purpose, but the edit views should be rendered with primitive renderers from, from my point of view. And the ideal view would be on each target system, if we one day would really not use VCL anymore, to have a UI framework system dependent and plug the apps with the edit views as uh, edit views. So, um, in, last, in last consequence, this would be needed anyway if you ask hardcore Mac guys, for example, to get the UI in a form they would accept. So, I, I have a long number of slides for primitives, but you can just study that when you download the presentation. I have tried to get uh, in, into the details what we have and what we not have. So, um, if you are interested, you can make a deep dive here. Maybe it helps to understand more how, how, how this uh, stuff is working and um, what, what uh, backgrounds are there. Uh, Lot, lots of um, 
interesting but hardcore low-level information. So back to the interesting stuff, current state of transition. So the transition to primitives is not complete, don't forget, because we were interrupted um, when all were fired. Um, I could just not uh, continue to do that. So I would estimate 40% uh, are done. So we have proof of concept with working staff, staff at Royal Impress. We have lots of gaps which we should fill, uh, which use old stuff, often showing problems and errors. We have places where the two words collide, uh, for example in Writer where you have the normal paint uh, containing the text and then you have to jump to paint a graphic or something which uses primitives and for that purpose uh, is buffered, for which we have um, uh, staff 2, which does that with primitives. Uh, but as I said, with the floss transition, sadly, the resources were killed, transition was interrupted, pretty much on hold for 10 or about 12 years now. Yeah, well, so I would love to work to continue that, because I think it's really necessary, but many needed steps are filed as tenders since years. Uh, never really get voted because there are no shiny new features but core reworks, so no good chances, uh, unfortunately. So what do we have? You can, you can check that when you download the slides. Uh, uh, let's, let's, let's check the renders because that is an important point which many seem to miss. So we have two basic primitive renders to target VCL output device. So these were never intended as being used uh, for 10 years or something. They were just a proof of concept and an in-between step in the transition with primitives. So um, the goal has always been to have system-specific renderers which would be in reach today and would have been in reach uh, 10 years ago too if the time would have been there. So. Um, this can do with the geometric information whatever they want and need internally. Every hack is allowed inside a renderer. Um, and they can visualize the defined geometry it identically if they are correctly implemented. And they are not that hard to implement. Uh, but we just don't have a reference implementation. So a few days ago when I prepared this talk, I started to do one. And I will try to finish it as a reference. And it's in drawing layer project and it's using direct 2D as an example. And it will render um, the primitives without using output device. And it will be simple because it will only uh, supports the most necessary primitives, which are four and five grouping primitives. And um, when this is done, uh, it can be copied and extended if someone has interest to do a good, fast, system-dependent renderer without having to implement SAR GDE. I will try to finish that work. Um, Metafile processor is another thing. It also goes back to output device today in many places, but that can be avoided because output device, as many of you may know, just creates uh, metafile actions. So we can make metafile processor independent of output device relatively easy and keep it for compatibility. So what do we not have? We just heard from Candy, primitive for PDF, for example because we have a primitive for SVG, for example. The SVG import just puts the SVG file in a primitive and when you call the decompose, SVG gets uh, passed and primitives created. We can have the same for PDF, why not? So, the good thing is, when you change it to primitives, you will also have the next command to change the primitives uh, to SCR objects, if you need to. So that opens the door for unified and better imports to wood open. Now we, have, we also have no primitive for custom shapes. Currently the custom shapes are still created, Regina knows for example, I think, uh, by 
creating SDR objects which are never shown and live in the background and to paint the custom shapes, uh, the primitives are fetched from those um, fake SDR objects in the background. So we could, we could simplify this, directly create uh, primitives for custom shapes would, would ma make the process much lighter and faster when, when you change custom shapes, sometimes it takes some time by the, by, during the interaction. What do we not have? Uh, I said writer and calc should be changed completely, but uh, read the small letters, no worries. You can still do procedural stuff when needed, for example. I understand writer is fast because uh, during text layout, the text is rendered directly, but you can do that in a specified renderer. But do it in the renderer where you are on the specific graphic system you are targeting. I think that would be better in the future. So, a uh, slideshow and discussing with Thorsten about that all the time since years. Um, chart geometry would be an idea too, for example. We have the slow chart stuff, so uh, directly creating primitive geometry may be an alternative. So much more stuff to talk about. And then I have two excursions, but the time is over. So for homogene transformations, some information um, which may be interesting um, because all the new stuff includes using more homogene transformations. And an um, excursion for hairlines, why are they so complicated and why do they make so many problems in the graphic course? So I hope this gives a good overview. So important sentences during the presentation from my point of view. Stop painting, start defining geometry. <laughs> We stand on the shoulders of giants. The new code of today is the old code of tomorrow. And to get rid of VCL, stop using VCL. So, time for questions. As a non-LibreOffice developer, um, uh, you, you mentioned in, in one of the slides that, um, that tender possibilities for some of this work uh, don't get prioritized because it's not um, uh, part of the core of LibreOffice. If it's not part of the core, does that mean that the work can be done separately, like in a, in a separate repository, offering something that, that only presents like an interface as, a, as, an, as an independent library that, could, that, that could, would require just switching to it, would just, just switching to it, or? Uh, no, I, I said it is part of the core. The problem is all of this is core changing work and you never get votes for core work and it's very hard to get funding for core work because core work is not a shiny feature. It's the stuff behind the curtain which users don't see so no one pays for making that good and shiny. But what we would need that urgently. Okay. Uh, okay, just quick. Uh, regarding this uh, PDF uh, you said, I already started working on the PDF that uses uh, draw primitives, and also one is, is important is also SVG export, which is not. Yeah, I agree. Uh, so for PDF import, um, I think the best way would really be uh, to do the same like with SVG import. I, I think you took a look. So just use the libraries we have. Uh, Candy mentioned them a few minutes ago and create the primitives. And with the primitives, you can do all the rest. You know? That's the easiest way. And I agree, I forgot SVG export. We urgently need SVG export. One big advantage of the primitives until today is I resisted to define a file format because defining a file format was the death for the meta files. And I will resist to define a file format as long as I can. So 
the SCG export, export would be an alternative uh, for exporting primitives and getting them back in again because we can even embed information. Thanks, Armin. Yeah. yeah.